what exactly makes a place a travel destination? There's many answers to that question, and I think everyone has their own. Some would say great food or unique local culture. Others might value simple comfort and accessibility. Others still may be drawn to specific attractions like casinos, adventure sports, or theme parks. There are as many opinions on what makes a good destination as there are travelers to visit them. But I think there's something else, an intangible quality that often goes unnoticed and undiscussed. Some may call it vibe, energy, or presence. It's the personality of a place, the unique feeling you get when exploring a new locale. A feeling which, by the way, is the main thing we try to convey in these films. There are very few destinations out there that can truly offer everything to everyone. But when it comes to Sedona, it comes close, and it has personality in spades. As you drive into Sedona, the first thing that strikes you is the view, and striking is a bit of an understatement. The town lies nestled in one of the most jaw-droppingly beautiful valleys in the world. Massive spires of striped red rock launch themselves skyward from rolling, sage-covered hills. The soaring towers and ridges are all at once vibrant, powerful, and somehow intimate, lending a strange feeling that you can almost reach out in any direction and just touch them. None of this is to say that the city itself is anything to balk at. Sedona is decidedly a relaxed, enjoyable, beautiful mountain town. There's two main areas, referred to respectively as Uptown and West Sedona. While West Sedona is a little bit more residential, your trip here will likely start in Uptown, which sports a gently winding stretch of galleries, gift shops, and restaurants that's ideal for an afternoon of shopping and exploration. There's plenty to see, and while the main drag is impressive enough, there's countless hidden courtyards and side alleys to stroll down. Shopping is a big activity here. Much like Taos and other southwestern tourist sites, there's a huge population of artists and artisans in Sedona that channel the town's inexplicable aura into keepsakes both large and small. And if that sounds like something you're into, sitting just a short way down the hill from uptown is an experience tailor-made just for you. Welcome to Tlacopake. This charming art and craft village was originally constructed in the 1970s to serve as a hub for many of Sedona's most renowned craftspeople to display and sell their works. The name, taken from an ancient Aztec language, translates roughly to those who craft clay from the land, and it's certainly a fitting moniker. Pottery, ceramics, jewelry, sculpture, and visual art of the highest caliber can all be found hiding amongst the shaded corridors and courtyards. Tlacopake's website describes the place as the art and soul of Sedona, a turn of phrase which I find both endearing and accurate. While it was originally built to replicate a traditional Mexican village, it somehow doesn't feel forced or inauthentic. It's a beautiful and laid-back place to relax, explore, and browse for some truly special art to take home. Honestly, I wish more shopping areas were built this way. It's certainly a welcome change from your average strip mall. Now, when it comes to food, Sedona doesn't disappoint. There's flavors here to suit any taste or budget. While the culinary scene isn't necessarily groundbreaking, there's plenty of options for great eats. Across the street from Tlacopake sits Pump House Station, which features simple but delicious sandwiches and salads and made for a great lunch stop while wandering the village. But if you know this channel, you know we don't just stop at sandwiches. The top of the local food chain in Sedona is held by a series of restaurants owned by powerhouse chef Lisa Dahl, who has a knack for creating inspired dishes across many cuisines. Her flagship restaurants Mariposa and Cucina Rustica were booked out some weeks in advance when we came to town, so we settled on the more straightforward Italian fare at Dal and DeLuca. Their anniversary pre-fee menu was a great experience, featuring solid presentations of arancini, caprese with mushrooms, a beautiful asparagus soup, and ravioli in a sherry cream sauce. The restaurant's unique old-world decor made for an extremely romantic evening. However, the real standout for us was Salt Rock Kitchen, located in the Amara Resort just a few steps from the Main Strip in Uptown. Southwest staples like adobo chicken, street tacos, and elote get something of a California spin here. 
their focus on simple preparations and fantastic local ingredients created a meal that was definitely worth remembering. While shopping and dining are great things to do in any travel destination, this valley offers much, much more than souvenirs and snacks. Sedona is deeply revered by many travelers as a place of ancient wisdom and spiritual power. It's not hard to understand why, just look around. The area surrounding Sedona has been inhabited by humans for somewhere between six and 10 millennia, beginning with the earliest Anasazi hunter-gatherer tribes who settled here thousands of years ago. More recently, the valley was home to the Sinagua, a somewhat mysterious native culture responsible for some of the most impressive ancient structures in America. Two of these sites are barely a 30 minute drive from Sedona, which makes them a perfect day trip for anyone interested in the history of the area. Perched on a tall hill around 20 miles southwest of Sedona sits Tuzagut National Monument, a stunning three-story Pueblo which was constructed nearly a thousand years ago. At its zenith, this stoic structure likely served as a hub of trading, living, and ceremony for the Sinagoa people. Its strategic positioning atop a high sandstone ridge offers stunning views in all directions of the Verde Valley region. A short drive to the east will land you at another breathtaking site, Montezuma Castle. While it is neither a castle nor related in any way to its namesake Aztec Emperor, this confounding cliffside structure predates Spanish exploration in the area by nearly 500 years. Anyone who holds the view that Native American tribes weren't highly advanced engineers clearly hasn't been here. Perched in an alcove 100 feet above the surrounding riverbed sits a 20-room structure that seems to defy physics itself. While defense from enemy tribes is an obvious reason to build something this way, it's believed that the main reason was actually to compensate for the annual flooding of the Beaver River that sits at the base of the cliff. While both Tuzigut and Montezuma Castle were built in the 12th century, they were suddenly abandoned just a few hundred years later. The reason the Sinagoa fled the area is unknown, but the strongest evidence points to the devastation of a massive volcanic eruption. Though little is known today about this fascinating culture and how they lived their lives, it's clear that they too held a great reverence for this powerful land and the natural beauty it harbors. This sense of spirituality and respect for the natural world resonates in Sedona to this day. In more modern times, the allure of the towering sandstone formations has given rise to something of a cult of personality centered around the energy here. Sedona is known throughout spiritual and naturalist circles as being home to energy vortexes, mystical sites where the raw power of the earth coalesces and flows forth. There are four such sites in and around the city. And whether you're an adherent of such beliefs or not, visiting one is a perfect opportunity to get out and explore the natural wonders around the area. The most famous of the vortexes is located at Cathedral Rock, which sits high above Sedona to the south of the city. While the trail is short, it's not exactly what I would call easy. There are sections that blur the line between hiking and full-on rock climbing, so come prepared. But get yourself to the top and you're in for some absolutely incredible views of the region. Depending on your beliefs, you'll also be standing at the heart of a powerful vortex of feminine earth energy. The effect of these vortexes varies depending on the visitor. Some say they feel a strong sense of calm introspection or inspiration. Others claim to have been healed of physical or spiritual maladies or were even given clairvoyant visions. Myself, I just stared around in awe at the breathtaking landscape. There are three other purported vortexes located in and around Sedona alongside hundreds of other hiking trails and nature areas. And whether you feel the power of the vortexes or not, the simple awesomeness of the environment is more than enough reason to go exploring. Vortexes aside, Sedona's connection to the arcane and the esoteric has given birth to a unique and distinctive local culture. Spend any amount of time in the city and you'll see spiritual and religious attractions of all shapes and sizes. 
There are countless psychics, mediums, tarot readers, energy healers, and aura photographers ready to aid in your quest for wisdom and transcendence, all for a small fee, of course. The scruples of these mystical entrepreneurs is a debate in which I will not engage, but regardless, Sedona is a place that has become a sacred destination for countless seekers of faith and enlightenment. Beyond the New Age crystal shops of Uptown, the city is home to several incredible places of worship that are welcome to all. The Amitabha Stupa at Peace Park is a stunning and tranquil desert garden centered around a traditional Buddhist stupa. Brimming with local flora and fauna and surrounded by gorgeous views, it's a perfect place for meditation and contemplation, and completely free to visit. Walking amongst the wandering paths gives you a sense of just how truly special Sedona is. Across the valley, and somewhat across the religious spectrum, sits the Chapel of the Holy Cross, a small but striking Catholic chapel that overlooks the city. Commissioned by local rancher and artist Marguerite Brunswig Stodd in 1955, its austere design is a grand architectural statement that simultaneously stands out, yet feels completely at home in the landscape. Inside, the chapel is a true place of worship, with an imposing but beautiful corpus towering over the small interior. Regardless of your faith, it's a space that evokes a sense of piety and pointedly reminds you of the spiritual significance that Sedona holds to many who travel here. Above all else, the thing that I found most surprising about Sedona was just how much plain, simple fun we had here. It's a much deeper and richer place than I was expecting. My only knowledge of it before visiting was of the New Age spiritual connection. The vortexes and the crystals and the transcendental meditation retreats. There are certainly people who may be turned off by these associations for one reason or another. There are others who may see it the other way around. How can you be shopping for knickknacks when there's so much vast spiritual energy to absorb? Regardless of whatever your feelings may be, Sedona can be so many things to so many people. It's a diverse, fun, and engaging destination with a personality and vibe all its own. And whether or not you find spiritual enlightenment here, I can all but guarantee you'll find a good time. <laughs>